Hey, today I'm working on this watercolor painting. It's one of my father's earlier uh, paintings. It might be the first watercolor he painted. If not, it's one of the one of the first. And um, I noticed the glass had cracked in it, so I pulled the glass out. And I want to cut a new piece of glass and drop it in the frame. But I, I also was uh, looking at the the painting, and and uh, I recently talked to my father about the painting, and he pointed out some things about it where you know, he made the frame and he colored the frame to highlight and bring up uh, details in the painting which I think is pretty cool and he also uh, cut this mat by you know with a with a razor you can kind of see where it's not quite perfect but he didn't have a, uh, a machine to cut mat he was just using a razor and a straight edge and so it's kind of an interesting uh, painting it's got a lot of detail in it and you can see like in the netting there's a lot of detail in the net and in his face and even the, the stitches in the hat there and also in the flame. I mean, there's a lot. I think he poured a lot into it over time and um, I just want to protect it and, and do what I can to uh, preserve it. On the back, he just used cardboard. I'm kind of interested to see what's on the other side of the cardboard here. Uh, and um, he just put some little finishing nails in there to hold it in place. And it's got the little wire here. You know, this was done maybe in the 60s. And uh, kind of cool that it's still around. And uh, hopefully I can pass it on to my grandchildren and children. And uh, for, for the future uh, folks to enjoy. And uh, also for them to know where it came from. The history of it is, is pretty interesting. Hey, today I'm working on this painting that my father did. I found it... Uh, up in the attic and the the, uh, the glass had broken out in it and this being a watercolor painting I wanted to preserve it so I'm going to cut a new piece of glass and install it in the frame and hopefully keep it safe um, my father also paints the uh, the frames to match the painting and so I know he made this this frame here and he also cut the mat so he, he does the, not only the uh, the painting but he also does the uh, mounting and and all that kind of thing and uh, I believe he just used some glass from a um, storm window or something he had cut. But somehow or another it had broken or got a crack in it. So I want to replace it and, and uh, protect it for the future. So I'll get started on that. I've got the glass cutter and I bought some thin glass from Home Depot. So I've got the painting down here. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is remove these, these nails out of the back. Uh, I believe the pine, the, the, the wood on this frame is pine, so it's pretty soft, easy to deal with. Which I'm happy to know that because uh, it'll make it a lot easier going back. I'm interested to see what's under this cardboard. There's the mat. And it looks like it's... They actually taped it using duct tape. So, I'm, and some, there's some scotch tape there. I'm not going to disturb that for sure. And the cardboard here, it looks like it had been used for something else. It was taped at one time. And so I think I'm going to use the uh, this actual painting as the template for the... Let's see how that fits. I only got one shot with the glass. I don't want to cut it too small. It's actually on the kind of the small side on most dimensions. Let me check... Uh, See what he's got going on with this here. This fit in there a little tighter. Yeah, it's not too. I'm a little worried about using either one of these. To be honest with you, I don't want it to be. I don't want it to be too small. So here's the glass.
you know the razor sharp when you just set it, uh, throw it on the table and it sticks. So I think I'm going to try to wedge that in there. And mark it with a sharpie maybe. Let's see what I'm dealing with here. And I'm going to have to um, have to do some cleaning, I guess, on that. Maybe not. I can set this in. I have a feeling the, the glass isn't really uh, square. <laughs> so, might be playing some tricks with me there. Cut that line there. Let me get something to hold that line. So this is the glass cutter I'm using. It's uh, called the oil hander hand cutter. It works pretty good. It's got a little reservoir of oil here and the head pivots around and hopefully I got enough oil in there for it. So I want to cut a little on the inside of the blue to compensate for the kerf. I mean the, the width of this guide on this blade here. Okay, that first cut was successful. Now I've got the longer cut to make. And that fits in there decently. So I want to be on the inside of that blue line again. And I think my guide may be too, yeah, it'll work. My guide's still going to work. Got lucky today. I'm coming over here because uh, this seems like the right thing to do. I like that sound. That's a good sound. You can tell when you got a good glass cutter when it makes a continuous scratching noise. I've used some that aren't very good and it's intermittent. Hopefully I've got another good cut here. Let's see. Oh yeah. I can tell you it's not me. It's the cutter. <laughs> the cutter is the, is the key. I've got some gum in here, so I'm going to have to clean that up. But I just want to do a test fit here. 
perfect. She drops in, looks good. I just need to get something to clean this tape off of there. I'm going to put my cutter up. I'll give you a closer look at it here. I've got two pretty good cutters. This one's the best, I think, because it has a, uh, the other one you dip into the oil. And that purple oil is special uh, glass cutting oil. I'll see if I can dig some of that up and show you. Found some of this product here. Someone left it for me to use. Hopefully it'll work. Motocraft. Let's see how it does on a priceless piece of art here. Do the other side now. I also have my uh, my glass cutter and the fluid. I want to show you that before we wrap this up. But for now, I'm gonna put the glass in. I can just look at it in the reflection. It looks pretty pretty good to me. Got the glass in the frame. I'll just uh, slide the picture in there. Of course, I want to make sure I'm got it the right orientation there. And then put the cardboard in place. And I'll use these fasteners that he used. Press them back in. I have some uh, real uh, fasteners for frames, but I just want to put this back just the way he had it. So I don't want to change it. It looks like he was putting put the nail in and then he would, it would bend and he would just rotate it over, push it in to hold it. So I don't want to change anything about that for him. Keep it, keeping it original.
Guess he ran out of nails. There's one, one place he didn't hit with a nail. I can see. So I want to show you, here's the, um, the oil I was using. And we've got two different kinds. These are for uh, sp specifically for cutting glass. And this is also a, uh, a glass cutter that I, I use a lot. Um, you just have to dip that. I have this can here, Dixie Chili can I use to uh, I put oil in there. And um, you can dip that in. But uh, I've kind of gone to where I just like this one here. It uh, simplifies it. You have the oil. The oil's right in the handle there. Actually, I might go ahead and fill that up some more. Although, not a good idea to do it over this painting. I'll need a funnel. But um, anyway, these are, these are the glass cutters that I have and, and the cutting oils. And we'll take a look at the painting now. I'm going to put some tape on there. See if I can find some. Looks a lot better. Found something I'm going to try here. Hopefully that'll hold it another 20 years or so. Here we go. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.